This following video will aim at teaching you the correct technique of interrupted suturing. It is imperative that even before you start suturing, you check that all your instruments, that is the limbs forceps, that's the two-in-one forceps, the suture tying forceps are optimal, the needle holder is correct, and the suture undamaged. It's very important to suture with a dry field, a perfect focus, good illumination, and a cornea which is consistently kept moist with the use of viscoelastic. Let's now move to understanding the suture. The suture used is a double-armed tenoproline suture made from Orolab, which is locally procured. And if you were to understand the needle further, it is actually, as you can see, 3 8 of a circle long. It is spatulated with a swatched end. Now, here's how the needle holder holds onto the needle. The needle holder should grasp the needle two-thirds away from the tip and it should hold it such that it makes an angle of 90 degrees to the body. In the video that follows, we will now demonstrate the technique of conoscleral suturing in a patient undergoing endothelial keratoplasty. The manual dexterity that the surgeon needs to develop takes some time and practice and what you need to work upon is to be able to consistently hold the needle at the correct angle with the correct level of firmness, understanding the different ocular tissues, their thickness, their firmness and the resistance they offer to the penetration of needles. Finally, the ability to negotiate sutures and make sure you don't end up entangling the sutures and most importantly to achieve the correct level of tautness when you actually tighten the suture and finally learning how to bury it. Now let's look at the actual technique of interrupted suturing. The suture is held with the needle holder two-thirds away from the tip with the correct orientation. The cornea lip is stabilized and raised and the needle passes through 80% of the thickness of the cornea. The sclera lip is then supported. The needle passes through 80% of the thickness of the sclera and then the needle is pulled out. The suture is cut. The needle is now re-grasped in a similar manner and in the same way another suture is taken next to the pre-existing suture. You need to ensure that a similar length from the limbus to the scleral end as well as to the corneal end of the suture is maintained. Let's move to tying the knot. One of the free ends of the suture is held with the plain forceps and a McPherson's is then used to create a knot with a three throw at the first time round, get the optimal level of tautness as you can see here, the second throw from the opposite side as a one, it is also tightened, then again one. This completes the suture. Once more, you can see a three, tighten, a one, and a one. Always ensure that you have a well-formed eye when you're taking the sutures because that gives you the correct level of tautness and thereby negating an end result which might be too tight or too loose a suture. The suture ends are cut short and now let's see how the sutures should ideally be buried. The suture is held firm with the forceps and it is turned downwards towards the cornea whilst simultaneously applying counter pressure from the inferior limbus and pulling on the eye upwards. Similarly, see how the suture is buried. The eye is pulled upwards and the suture held firm and pulled downwards to bury it on the scleral side. At the end of suturing and burying the sutures, this is what it should look like. The rest of the video will depict a few more such interrupted sutures taken at different areas of the limbus.